yeah. Welcome in. Happy Tuesday to you. It is another edition of the Joe Ranieri Show brought to you by wagertalk.com, uwager.eu, halftimemagic.com, trendybets.com, and of course our friends at Miami Acura. Make sure you check out miamiacura.com as long as you're going to be on the web here today and we're loaded once again like we usually are plenty to get to including a visit by our good friend ralph michaels from wagertalk.com ralph drops by on tuesday so we can go ahead and talk college basketball and ralph has got a couple of picks tonight that he wants to uh he wants to run your way also he's got a couple of very important details about college basketball this time of year some of the trends that he has noticed so far in college basketball. And it is a big night because it does start the Big Ten ACC Challenge tonight. So the ACC, the Big Ten, two of the big powerhouse conferences in college basketball. Some would say the ACC is far and away the best conference in college basketball. Others will say don't sleep on the Big Ten. Well, if that's the case, the Big Ten has got uh, it's got its work cut out for them over the next couple of days. Duke, Indiana tonight, plenty of storylines. Ralph's going to help us sort through all of that, plus those pretty important trends that you need to know if you are a sports better and you're looking at college basketball. It's a little bit different now than what college basketball has been over the last month or so due to the fact that a lot of these kids and a lot of these schools have been playing in tournaments that allowed them to go back-to-back-to-back games. That's not so much anymore in December. You got finals, you got end of semester, you got vacation. It's a different ball game. Ralph is going to be here to help us sort all of that. That's why we love when Ralph drops by wagertalk.com. I don't know what else to say about these guys, our friends at trendybets.com. What is there to say? They have been straight fire over the last two weeks now. We've got another one of their NBA free plays of the day. They killed it again last night. These guys are just on fire. I don't know what to say. They are. If you're not taking what they're saying, if you're not heading over to TrendyBets.com, I don't know what you guys are doing. But their free play, you know how it works, comes up top of the hour, 5 o'clock. We've got another one for you. Eight out of the last 11, they have nailed So they are making some of you an awful lot of money and uh, others of you not so much because you haven't been paying attention. But we will get to that. We're also going to talk a little bit about the college football playoff possibilities. It is a nightmare. It is outside of the the big three right now, Alabama, okay, Clemson, Notre Dame. We know Alabama and Georgia got to play each other. Georgia currently sits at number four. What happens if Georgia wins? What happens if Alabama wins? What do you do with Ohio State? Okay, what do, you, what do you do with Oklahoma? There's a whole lot of scenarios here that could blow up in the committee's face. We'll try and sort through some of it. Also, we're going to talk a little college, uh, college, not college, I'm sorry, NFL playoff scenarios because the NFC is crazy, as is the AFC. So there's a lot to look at here today. We're going to start, of course, by bringing in our good friend Ralph Michaels here in just a minute. But I do have a new segment on the show that, we, uh, that we'd that we love for you guys to participate in today. It is called our HalftimeMagic.com text line. We've got a text line now here on the show, and we've got a question associated with that text line. And the question is quite simply, what NFL coaches, or what NFL coach rather, is going to be fired next? What NFL coach is going to be fired next? Uh, We'll go ahead and show you exactly what Vegas thinks and where the odds lie because I know where my money's going, or at least I'm hoping by placing some money on this particular coach that he'll be gone. But we want to hear from you. Text us who you think the next NFL coach uh, who will be fired is 305 791 3839. That's 305 791 3839. One of you, by participating and texting in here, your answer is going to have a chance at winning yourself a free pass, a one day free pass to halftimemagic.com. That means a day worth of free plays from halftimemagic.com. All you got to do is text in who you think the next NFL coach to get fired is 305 791 
3839. That is how you reach us here on the show. And of course, we want to do thank before we get to Ralph here from wagertalk.com. We want to thank our good friends over at Miami Acura for sponsoring us, making this happen here. And of course, we ask that if you are in the market for a new or certified pre owned car this holiday season, that you do nothing before you go to Miami Acura first. You can visit them, MiamiAcura.com. You can call them at 855-564-4669. Or if you're in the 305 or the 954, get your asses up and just head over to South Dixie Highway. We're talking new showroom, and we're talking deals like we've never seen before, including on the all-new 2019 RDX. They don't know, and I just talked to them, they don't know how long it's going to last these deals. But right now, it is priced to move. You can finally get that car that you've always wanted, only at a price you probably never thought was possible. But you got to get to Miami Acura today. Visit them, MiamiAcura.com, or simply call them at 855-564-4669. Sixty-nine. Well, guys, happy Tuesday. Joining us uh, on the Miami Acura Hotline is none other than Mr. Ralph Michaels, wagertalk.com. Also, make sure you guys check him out at Cal Sports LV. It is college basketball season. So much going on right now as we come out of the Thanksgiving break. We've got, for instance, uh, we got the start of the Big Ten and the ACC Challenge going on here. Ralph, it's a good time to be a, uh, a sports connoisseur, is it not? Oh, it is. You know, you're talking about the most important couple weekends of football with all the rivalry games and championships coming up this week. And, you know, the NFL now where you can't watch a game without seeing the playoff potentials and who's in the hunt and who has it locked up. And then college basketball, you know, everyone has five, six, seven games in at this point. And, you know, we start turning our attention, and right around the corner, we're going to get into some conference play, especially the Big Ten this year. Yeah. They went to a 20-game conference schedule, so they're playing a couple conference games in December. Then they'll play a few more non-conference and then get into their full slate of conference games. So some unique situations coming up. And that's why I think this is probably maybe one of the big, most important weeks for, uh, from a perspective standpoint for the Big Ten. We know the ACC, by all measurement, is probably the best conference in college basketball. But the Big Ten has an opportunity, you know, with these games starting tonight over the next couple of days to really, co- to really kind of announce their presence and say, hey, don't look past us, especially if they do pretty well, you know, Michigan State, if they beat Louisville. um, There's some opportunities here. Wisconsin's another one. Purdue gets Florida State. There's some opportunities here over the next couple of days. I actually have the Big Ten rated a little higher than uh, than the ACC. Wow. And yes, the ACC has the Duke and North Carolina, but you know, to me, you got Michigan, Michigan State. Wisconsin's going to be a power again this year with five starters back. I think they'll take care of NC State tonight. Then Purdue, Indiana, Ohio State, Nebraska, you know, to me, the upper half is even better. And, you know, one team that doesn't get recognition, and I have actually, I actually have them as the best conference in average, that's the Big 12 conference mm. because – You've got your Kansas, you've got your Texas Tech, your West Virginia. They have no they have no horrible teams. You know, last year the worst placed team in the conference was Iowa State. And Iowa State was a top eighty team going thirteen and eighteen against the number twenty three schedule. So they don't get a lot of love because they only have the ten teams and they're never going to get nine or ten teams in the tournament like the ACC might. Mm. But if you look at the average ranking per team, because of only having ten teams, I think they compare up there as well. Ralph Michaels uh, joining us, wagertalk.com, at Cal Sports LV. Great follow on Twitter, guys. Uh, and maybe the game that everyone's most looking forward to tonight for no other reason other than we might be looking at four, maybe possibly five top uh, draft picks uh, next year. Indiana taking on Duke. It's Duke's first time to the court since they lost to Let's face it, a damn good Gonzaga team right now. I don't know what people were expecting. I know there were some people were shocked that Duke lost to them, but it's not as if Gonzaga is some sort of pushover team. But Indiana, Duke, four, possibly five top picks in the draft here tonight. Should be a fun game to watch, if nothing else, Ralph. 
Yeah, I like this Indiana team. We've talked about them here before, mm. and I'm a fan of the Hoosiers. But tonight, uh, Indiana is just a very, very banged-up team. <clears throat> Excuse me. They've got four guys that are questionable or out for a night. So um, I, I would have loved the back to Hoosiers because I think this line is inflated because everyone's thinking there's no way Duke can lose two in a row after that Gonzaga loss. But, um, you know, I just think that because of the injuries with Indiana, I, I can't back them, nor do I think anyone should. But, again, I still think this line is too high for the Duke Blue Devils. Yes, they're great. Yes, they're back at home. But now they have pressure. They, they've shown what they can do. The Auburn game was close. The Gonzaga game, you know, they, they only shot 43%. They allowed 52% on the defense. So I think they're going to have a little pressure on their shoulders tonight. Yeah, and speaking of pressure, you know, we've talked about this team on the show before in your neck of the woods, and let me make sure I get this right, Ralph. Nevada, okay, I'm pretty sure I nailed it there. Nevada uh, is a pretty good team, but they're going to have national attention certainly this week. They've got a game against Loyola. Then they've got USC, Arizona State, Grand Canyon. You know, they have an opportunity to show on a national stage now if they are really as good as a lot of people thought they would be uh, before the year started. Have, been, have they lived up to expectations in your mind so far? Oh, absolutely. And and they are, I mean, they are as legit as they get. I mean, I think it's going to be, uh, I think they can challenge Gonzaga as the number one seed in the West. Mm. They are that and that talented. Now, you know, the one thing I like about Nevada tonight is, you know, you are so deep with your guard play and with your experience. Um, you are playing your first true road game, which is tough. But Loyola isn't one of those monster places to play where you have 16,000 fans and you can't even hear yourself think. You know, you have to remember Nevada has revenge for that loss last year in the March Madness. They mm -hmm. lost by 1.6968. And the other thing is, I think Loyola actually is the team that has a bullseye on their back. That's very weird to say, but last week I had a play on Boston College against Loyola and Boston College it was a neutral setting game Boston College was laying four but from the reports I had read in the Boston papers BC was very looking forward to playing uh, Loyola because everyone knows about the Ramblers mm. everyone knows about Sister Jean <laughs> everyone knew the run they made they got more publicity than any other team out there so despite Nevada having a great ranking, I think Loyola still is the team with a bullseye on their back, and I like the Wolfpack tonight. Ralph Michaels joining us, wagertalk.com, at Cal Sports LV, one of the best Twitter follows uh, around. Certainly, if you love college basketball, the NBA, and we'll talk about uh, a pretty good uh, list that Ralph has put together and how you can get that in just a minute. But let me ask you, so far, uh, six games into the season for many of these squads, um, have you noticed any trends, Ralph? Are there some teams that all they do is cover? There are some teams that all they do is not cover. What are some of the trends you've noticed thus far? Well, I, you know, I think when you look at the teams that are undefeated against the spread, and you would think more teams six games in are going to have undefeated records, but they don't. And if I give you the list of teams that have yet to lose against the spread – I'm going to say that nine out of ten of our listeners couldn't even name the conferences they're in because wow. they're smaller type teams. Samford is the only team that's seven and zero against the spread this year. Hofstra, Central Connecticut State, Holy Cross, and East Tennessee State are six and zero. Wow! To me, Samford is my most surprised teams. Samford had zero returning starters this year. They completely have done a great job with a couple transfers. Not only are they 7-0 against the spread, they've been challenging. Even when they're a dog and they cover, they've been in those games. And you look at some teams that have yet to cover against the spread. These are teams that have had great reputations. You know, West Virginia last year was a top 10 team. They were as high as AP number two. And this year, you know, they had – uh, they had a solid group coming back with three returning starters. People had them as a top-ten team. 
They aren't playing as well. They had a couple injuries in the front court. They're 0-5 against the spread. Mm. Middle Tennessee is another one. Middle Tennessee is one of those mid-majors that always impressed and always could have been close to being a team not being in even if they didn't win their division. Middle Tennessee 0-5 with a new head coach <laughs> against the spread. And Iona also 0-5 ATS this year. Wow. So so there's uh, there are just a couple of head turners then for sure. And if you – listen, if it's numbers that you want, you know, wagertalk.com is certainly a place to head to uh, with some of the worksheets that you have available, Ralph. And I, and I do believe even from an NBA standpoint, you've got something new for listeners that they can grab and download. You know, I did it last year, and it just had great success. And – it's a, it's a one-page-per-day NBA stat sheet. And what I found in the NBA, I don't do much NBA, but obviously if I find value in there, I use it. But this stat sheet gives you year-to-date numbers, of course, where you can find anywhere straight up against the spread over, under, and then home or away. But it also gives you the last two weeks. And current form in the NBA is so important. Teams have their ebbs and flows. And by looking at just the last two weeks overall and then the home and away breakdown, you get some great surprises. You know, like the Detroit Pistons this year, well, they're 10 and 7 on the year. But if you look at them the last two weeks, this mm. is from today's stat sheet, they're 4 and 1 straight up, mm. and they're 5 and 0 against the spread. Well, not only do I tell you they're 5 and 0 against the spread, I tell you that their average line has been plus. Point eight points per game. Their average score is one fifteen point four to one ten, and at home they're three and zero against the spread. An average line of minus four point seven, an average over under line of two sixteen point eight, mm. and an average score of one fifteen point seven to one oh six point seven. So a lot of numbers there, but knowing an ATS number is one thing. Right. Knowing what the average total, the average ATS line and how much they've covered those by are just as important. So you can follow me on Twitter. I post it free daily. But if you want the entire stat sheet, which gives you today's games and tomorrow's games so you can get a jump ahead, you go to wagertalk.com, go to my handicappers page and it's a free download every day i want to talk and it's a just a great place to go it's a great source of information we talk about it all the time here on the show how knowledge <laughs> is power and you head over to wagertalk.com you got nothing but knowledge they are free knowledge if you visit uh, the cal sports page over there you'll get even more free knowledge and he's a great follow also on twitter at cal sports lv it should be pointed out too, um, uh, ralph this time of year you know, we get, we're watching, and I know I've talked to a, a lot of people who watch college basketball, and we've got some teams that in these tournaments that played back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back nights. And, you know, December comes around, and what a lot of people don't understand, and they should when you're looking at these games, is these kids got breaks coming, they've got finals, they've got end of semester. The schedule certainly changes in college basketball with these players, and it's important to keep that in the back of your mind mind when you're looking at these games yeah it is you know and, and I wanted our listeners to hear just some numbers and again it's not a it's not a great uh, it's not a tool that you're going to be basing a play on but hey if you like a team and these angles say to play that team it makes it stronger or if there's a team you sort of like and this angle tells you not to play it, then, you know, it's a team you want to fade. But I never, ever base the play on a, a sole system or angle. Just use it part as your repertoire. And when I looked at teams that have six days or more of rest, usually there's a, there's a week in the year when the kids are on finals that they don't want them to play any games. They want them concentrating on their tests. And that's coming up here in the next couple of weeks. And since 2014, I went back the last couple of years. If you are on a game with six or more days rest and you're a home dog, a small home dog, of four or less. Mm. So you haven't played a game in six days. You're a home dog of one, two, three, or four points. You are only 57 and 84, 40.4%. Mm. You know, and is that logical? Well, I guess so. You're a home dog, which means the other team is better than you. You haven't played a game, so you might be a little rusty. And again, a 40% play over four years with 140 
situations is a powerful tool. So again, with six days or more of rest, if you're a small home dog of under four, you want to fade that team 57 and 84, 40.4%. Now on the flip side, the exact opposite. Now, when you have a home dog of four or less, again, they're a team that is sizably worse than the other team because you're at home and yet you're a dog. But if you have a small home favorite, you're only flipping the, the line by a few points. If you're a small home favorite in the exact same situation, laying only one, two, three, or four, you are 107, 84, and five, mm. 56% to the positive. So again, you're at home. You're playing a team very similar to talent. You have the strong home court in your favor. And all you have to do is basically win the game because you're only laying four or less a 56% play. Love that. That's the kind of information we're talking about. We need an edge. As as sports bettors, you need an edge. You're always looking for an edge when you make a play, and this is the kind of information that will help you do that. That's why we suggest you head over to at Cal Sports LV on Twitter. All sorts of nuggets like this uh, come out during the week with Ralph. It's one of the best Twitter follows there is. And I want to ask you about a, a couple of games tonight, Ralph, why we've, uh, why we've got you. The first one is NC State taking on uh, Wisconsin tonight. I believe it's a 9 o'clock tip. And to me, this is a battle of, uh, well, the impression early on is that maybe the schedules aren't altogether the same between NC State and Wisconsin. Would you agree on that? <laughs> uh, I would I would laugh at that. Um, you know, I made this line 10 tonight, wow. and – uh, it actually came came down, and you look at the teams and you say, well, you know, NC State is undefeated and, and, and Wisconsin has a loss, but when you talk the strength of schedule that teams have faced, there are 353 teams in Division I college basketball. Mm. North Carolina State has played the number 353 <laughs> strength of schedule. Your opponents, Mount St. Mary, Maryland Eastern Shore, UNC Asheville, Maine, St. Peter's, and Mercer. Mercer was their last game. Mercer is the only team that ranks in the top 230 of college basketball. They're ranked number 175, and NC State had come from behind to beat them 78-74 on Saturday. And then one of the most important trends is not only has NC State played the weakest schedule, all six games have been at home. Mm. Now they're playing on, excuse me, on the road for the first time in a very hostile environment against the Wisconsin team that had a losing record last year. So people may not think they're the same Wisconsin team of old, but they are. They have a top 10 defense. They have five returning starters. They've already beaten Xavier, Stanford, and Oklahoma all away from home. And they're off a loss in their last game against Virginia, which I had as my number one team coming into the year. And they lost that game by seven. I think the Badgers, this is a a blowout for me. Minus, uh, minus six and a half currently is what uh, Wisconsin is. I think it's safe to say Ralph definitely likes the Wisconsin Badgers in tonight's game. And uh, and just as I look here at Ralph as a, on an updated line, we had talked about this game earlier. If you're just joining us, Ralph Michaels uh, on the Miami Acura hotline. Uh, Duke is a 15 and a half point favorite tonight against Indiana. But you had mentioned Indiana's a pretty beat up team right now. But 15 and a half, does that number seem a little too much for you or is that number right about where you think it should be given the circumstances well it opened 14 and a half and it's gone to 15 and um you know i I think it's a situation where there's times that if you like indiana when you have that many players banged up they have four people on their injury list and you don't know if they're going to play if you don't have your entire complement going into cameron it's silly to back a team so while i think the duke line is too high i also think that uh you have a bunch of young kids that thought they were going to go undefeated and are now coming off their first loss well 
Coach K either gets them motivated and, and they can really put on a number here and perhaps score 100 points in a blowout, or perhaps these kids react a little differently and realize, well, you know, we're still going to have to play the season. We're not going to be crowned the NCAA champions without playing a game. So, I, again, there's there's different motivations in this game. But with the line, I would would have liked to back Indiana in this spot, but I just can't. Let me ask you, too, about, you know, sometimes a, a weak schedule can, can fool the odds makers. Not always, but sometimes. There is a game tonight, East Carolina getting five and a half against UNC Wilmington. And what have they had? Seven games, and East Carolina has faced just one quality opponent. But these two teams, they face off each. They face off against each other just about every year in non-conference. East Carolina five and a half uh, at UNC Wilmington over UNC Wilmington. I kind of like that play. I like the points in this game. What do you think? Well, the the, the thing that concerns me for East Carolina is. You know, you come in four and three, mm. and their offense has just been horrible. You know, offensive efficiency, they're 326, and they try to play fast. So when you have a team that tries to play up-tempo and is bad on offense, you can really you can really turn the game into a runaway. And East Carolina, as I said, uh, strength of schedule, as you brought up, mm. very, very poor, and – They've only played one game away from home. That was a Georgia Tech game. They ended up losing that by 25. Mm. And then they lost to High Point on Saturday. High Point's another one of those teams that has surprised me. Tubby Smith is the coach at High Point. So while you may look at East Carolina and say, oh, he's fading East Carolina because they, they lost to High Point. And who mm. the hell is High Point? Yeah. Again, High Point has surprised me in playing very well with their very high profile head coach. So it's not a it's not a knock at all against High Point. I just think it's your first road game in four games. You've only played one other true road game. And Wilmington has has played, you know, they have an East East Eastern Illinois win that's bad. They've played a poor schedule too. Home losses against Greenboro and Stanford, but to me, I, I just think they the game's gonna be favored in their pace. Their offense is much better than East Carolina. Um, so if I had to pick a side, I don't have any type of play on this. I would lead with uh, lean with Wilmington. Wilmington there. All right, Ralph Michaels, wagertalk.com. That's where you'll find him. Also, Cal Sports LV. And, you know, Ralph, it's funny. As I look down this list, we, we've – it's been known that usually schools that have really good football programs uh, don't often have really great basketball programs and vice versa. And I'm being told here that we're not giving enough love to what Buffalo has got going on and the Bulls. Not only we know how great they have been in uh, certainly in Mac play this year in football, but how about what this Bulls team has been able to do? I think they just beat West Virginia. Uh, who'd have thunk it that Buffalo, not not only a quality football program, but maybe possibly a quality basketball program at the same time. Yeah, well, they are. I mean, they are a legitimate. They are a legitimate top fifty team, meaning that if they didn't win the MAC, mm. they very well could get a uh, an at large berth. Wow. Um, you you know you're looking at it. You're looking at a situation where. Yes, the West Virginia game. West Virginia had a couple players injured that game, and they won in overtime. So I don't give them – you know, we talked about West Virginia being 0-5 against the spread. I don't give them the credit for that. And their other wins haven't been great. I mean, they beat Marist and Dartmouth and Southern Illinois. Not a bad schedule. But the players they have, you're going to see C.J. Massenburg, who uh, <coughs> is one of the top players in the country. He's a six foot three senior shooting forward. And – um you know, the way he's playing this year, he's really leading the team. He missed one game, but uh, he had 43 points in that West Virginia game, uh, scored 21 against Maris. He's a guy that can lead the team. So uh, Buffalo clearly one of the best mid-major teams. Buffalo clearly is going to have a record in that 27-5 and five range, wow. you know, 30, maybe 30-3 and three range. Um you know, they're, they're going to lose to Syracuse. They're going to lose to Marquette. They play both of those on the road coming up December 18th and 21st. Mm. But other than that, they may run the table and only have two losses. If that's the case, it's rare. We've seen it happen year in and year out. St. Mary's got left out last year. Mm. You know, if you're not a Power 5 team, 
it's rare you get two teams in the tournament besides maybe the, the Missouri Valley Conference. Right. But I think Buffalo can be one of those teams if they don't win the MAC tournament. Wow. There you go, Buffalo fans. All right, Ralph Michaels, wagertalk.com. He joins us again on Thursday for our college football and NFL preview show. But make sure you guys head over to wagertalk.com. Check out his handicapping page there, Cal Sports. More importantly, head over to Twitter. Make sure you follow him. One of the best follows there, at Cal Sports LV. Ralph, always a pleasure, my friend. Whole lot of games to just uh, buckle up and uh, and hold on over the next couple of days. But you hang in there. We'll talk to you again on Thursday. Joe, thanks, bud. We'll talk to you in a few. You got it. Ralph Michaels, wagertalk.com. Make sure you guys head over there. Yeah, love that stuff from Ralph. Every time we get a chance to uh, talk to him, don't forget, he'll be on the show again Thursday. Uh, We are loaded uh, this week. We'll get to our schedule here in just a minute. But Ralph joins us Tuesdays for college basketball, Thursdays, for NCAA football as well as NFL picks. So all sorts of knowledge coming you uh, your way, and we are loaded all week long, including the captain joining us uh, tomorrow, getting ready Friday. ton of MAC action, I think. Northern Illinois taking on Buffalo. The captain loves his college basketball and his MAC action. The captain underscore capping will join us tomorrow, as will the Prez, the man who created wagertalk.com, at least one half of the man who created wagertalk.com, the Prez. He'll stop by tomorrow. Going to talk a little bit about understanding how to gamble as a professional better and some NHL plays because that man knows NHL like none other. And then we told you, of course, Ralph back there on Thursday. I do believe that Sports Picks 365 is also going to be joining us uh, either tomorrow or Thursday. And then Friday, one of the newest members of the Joe Ranieri Show, Joe D'Amico from All American Wins. Yes, All American Wins. Uh, fantastic guy. Been doing it about 40-some-odd years out of Vegas. We love Joe. You're going to love him. What a character he is. He's going to be joining us on Friday. So once again, loaded here on the show. Do us a favor. Do yourself a favor if you haven't done so already. Please go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the retweet button. uh, Hit uh, all of those uh, buttons that you got to hit there. We broadcast to you and stream across all five of the major platforms that includes twitter that includes twitch that includes periscope that includes facebook that includes youtube and maybe four or five others that i don't think they've uh, identified just about uh, just yet but uh, any of your support all your support at this point any support that you can give us is so appreciated and uh, and we really do the sponsors uh, love it we love it and of course we try to bring you nothing but the best of the best some of the best professional sports handicappers around the country on this show daily doing their job of not only educating but providing some of their thoughts and some of their picks and they have been spot on guys like our trendy bets eight out of the last 11 on their nba free play of the day that is coming your way coming up top of the hour we'll go ahead and get that for you also halftimemagic.com we've got our halftimemagic.com text line open And the question is today, what NFL coach gets fired next? 305-791-3839, that's the text number. Area code 305, that's right, it's the the 305, people. 305-791-3839. Who do you think the next NFL coach to get canned will be? We already know Hugh Jackson is out And there are rumors that Hugh Jackson is going to maybe possibly be the offensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals. I I don't know what's going on over there, but we want to hear from you. And uh, for your participation and your engagement here with us at that number, HalftimeMagic.com is offering you a free day pass. That is right. You can get a free day on HalftimeMagic.com. That means a day of plays from HalftimeMagic.com simply for telling us and texting us right now who is the next NFL coach to get fired. Hit us up at 305-791-3839. That's 305-791-3839. And give yourself a chance to go ahead and uh, and get a free day's worth of plays 
from Scott and all the guys over at HalftimeMagic.com who do an amazing, and I mean an absolutely amazing job, and there is plenty of opportunity for you guys uh, to go ahead and make some money right now uh, with all the college basketball games on tonight, NBA games. We've got um, uh, NHL games. We've got a lot going on right now, so do yourself a favor. Go ahead. Let's hear from you. 305 791 38 39. And coming up next, we'll go ahead and tell you who Vegas thinks. We'll show you the latest odds uh, from Las Vegas on who they think the next coach to be fired is. We'll see if you agree on that. Plus, we'll talk a little college football playoff disaster. It could actually be a disaster after this week for the committee. We'll go ahead and give you all of those scenarios. That's coming up. Plus, your thoughts, your texts, 305-791-3839. Don't go anywhere. We just got to thank a few more of our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll go ahead, give you that NBA play of the day, brought to you by TrendyBets.com. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Why? Because you can save 45% on packages compared to your high-priced cable bill. Wow. Take those giant scissors out and cut the cable and save with Dish TV. Plus, you get a free DVR upgrade to record your favorite shows and free installation. And with Dish Anywhere, you can watch TV for free on your mobile device. Act fast. You can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company do that for you? I don't think so. Get all the best TV programming at your fingertips at a fraction of the price of cable TV. So say adios, arrivederci, goodbye to the high cable bill, and save up to 45% on Dish TV packages today. These are limited time offers and can change at any time. Call fast. 800-293-0328. 800-293-0328. 800-293-0328. That's 800-293-0328. Do you use the expensive blue or yellow pills to charge your sex life? Are you thinking about it? Mm. What if we can promise you the same results for less than $3 a pill? If you're paying $20 a pill for the other pills, you're getting taken to the cleaners. Our pills deliver the exact same results for less than $3. You'll save more than $16 a pill for the same results. And right now, radio callers will get 44 blue or yellow pills for $120 with free discreet shipping. You can save more than $700 off pharmacy prices. Charge your sex life now and save a ton of money. Call now and get your 44 pills and save over $700 and qualify for free shipping. Stop overpaying and call right now. 800-764-9168. 800-764-9168. 800-764-9168. That's 800-764-9168. Greece is cheap. But the airfare costs a fortune. Paris? Not much closer. And again, airfare... What about Puerto Vallarta? Let's face it, flying anywhere is just too expensive. Wait, what's this? Low-cost airlines. With one call to low-cost airlines, you'll drastically slash your travel costs. We're talking insanely low airline prices to any of your favorite destinations. Where would you like to go? London, Rome, Costa Rica, Australia? Wow, that's cheap. So why wait? Call now to learn how crazy cheap it is to fly anywhere in the U.S. or international. Our prices are so low, we can't publish them. The only way to get them is to call to instantly hear the most amazing best deals on airlines travel. It's that easy. So call now and start packing. 800-761-1427. 800-761-1427. 800-761-1427. That's 800-761-1427. Get ready to talk sports. It's the Say It With Me podcast. Now here's your host, Joe Ranieri. Welcome back in. We've got your TrendyBets.com NBA free play of the day coming your way. Just about, uh, oh, I don't know, nine minutes. Nine minutes or so. These guys have been on fire. I mean, just straight fire. So 
We're so glad to have them uh, on uh, on the show here as a part of the team. And those of you that have been uh, taking notes and those of you that have been uh, monitoring their free plays, then you know it's been straight fire uh, all week. They nailed it again last night, the over in the Washington-Houston game. The damn game went into overtime, so... These guys, it's just it's picks like that. They've had consistently time and time again over the last two weeks. So we've got another one of their NBA free plays of the day. Uh, that is coming up here just about the top of the hour. But first, we've been asking you who you think the next NFL coach to get fired is. And we're asking you to go hit us up on the HalftimeMagic.com text line, 305-791-3839. Go ahead and participate. You got nothing to lose. I'm I'm interested. We're taking a poll here to see how many of you are going to get this right because I'm going to show you the current odds on who Vegas thinks and who Vegas is betting on to be the uh, the next NFL coach to be fired. And we're asking you guys to hit us up and tell us who you think will be the next guy to be shown the door. Not who you want because I think we all want, but who do you think? Uh, is going to be that next coach. 305-791-3839. That's your HalftimeMagic.com text line. Uh, by participating and taking the time to uh, to hang out with us here, uh, we're going to go ahead and HalftimeMagic.com is going to give uh, one of you participants an opportunity to get a free day's pass to Halftime Magic. That's right. So one of you is going to have an opportunity to go ahead and get a free day's worth of plays courtesy of the good folks over at HalftimeMagic.com. Do yourself a favor, head over there right now. It is truly a total unique way to go about sports betting and the way you play and the way you bet. It really is one of the coolest things. HalftimeMagic.com. Now, I can tell you right now, a couple of the texts that we have been getting in, we've got actually a few people for Doug Marone who uh, a lot of folks think that Doug Marone is going to be the uh, the next guy out. We got a couple of uh, John Gruden people have uh, have texted in also. A lot of people think Gruden is. I can tell you right now, as much as Raider fans want Gruden gone, Gruden ain't going nowhere. Um, you know, the Davis family loves Gruden. They threw a literal bank at him. I mean, they they picked up a bank and threw it at John Gruden to do exactly what he is doing, which is completely flush this team out, dismantle this team, get it down next to nothing, acquire draft picks, build it up from scratch, and move it to Vegas. And currently, nothing else matters to this organization other than getting to Las Vegas and being in a very profitable situation. Winning football games, not a priority for the Raiders. But that's not because John Gruden is doing this out on his own. It's because... Uh, it's because the Davis family goes, yeah, we got to we got to shed these contracts. We don't want to be in a position to have to overpay for anybody. We want this move to happen and we want to be done with it. And that's really where the priority is. And unfortunately, uh, John Gruden and I know Raider fans, you're dying. Uh, but John Gruden, he ain't doing anything that wasn't already signed by the man who's signing his check, all hundred million of it, supposedly. Uh, He's not doing anything that hasn't already been discussed and figured out in the boardroom there at the Oakland Raiders headquarters. Uh, But you guys keep heading us up. 305-791-3839. Adam Gase, of course, it wouldn't be Miami here if we didn't have the Miami brethren texting in right now telling us that Adam Gase is somebody that's going to go. I don't think that's going to be. Uh, the situation either. I do think Adam Gase, and we talked to Lisa Johnson yesterday from our turf FB who covers the Dolphins. She's covered them for 17 years here in South Florida. And she, um, she is under the impression as are a lot of folks here in Miami that there have been enough injuries to buy Adam Gase a little bit more time. So, and yes, he, he, He's been he's been given the hand he's been given. He's been given Ryan Tannehill. He was supposed to be this quarterback whisperer. And if if any if we learned anything in that Indianapolis Colts game, it was that um, he's not whispering loud enough because not only did he not give Ryan Tannehill an opportunity to actually win that game in uh, in the fourth quarter, um, he opted on 
you know, fourth and ten, what was it, to run a a, a draw play or something along those lines and not even go for it. So uh, it's not a very good mood here in Miami, and I know a lot of folks want to point blame at Adam Gase, and he shares certainly some of the blame, but I don't think that the Ross family, at, uh, you know, is Stephen Ross is not going to be uh, firing Adam Gase, unfortunately, anytime soon. Uh, the two that are at the top of this list, from Vegas are the two that should be fired immediately. I will say that. They are the two that absolutely should be fired and sooner rather than later because these are two guys that do the one thing that drives me absolutely crazy in the NFL is they coach not to lose. They don't coach to win. And there's a number of guys that you can probably consider under that umbrella. But these two guys are definitely at the top of the list. And this is currently the list from Las Vegas on the next NFL coach to be fired. Mike McCarthy taking the lead, plus 400. Todd Bowles, plus 425. And Steve Wilkes at plus 450. Now, I don't know why people think Steve – I mean, it's his first year there. It wouldn't – well, it wouldn't surprise me because it's Arizona. Let's face it, everything they do in that organization is a little ass backwards. But you're going to give him another year or so to try to figure it out there. He's got a rookie quarterback. They got rid of the offensive coordinator. They've got – is it – who is it? Uh, not Byron Leftwich. Uh, is it David Garon? Who is? No, it is Byron Leftwich is now the uh, offensive coordinator there working with him. Uh, Steve Wilkes is a defensive-minded head coach, and they have pretty much uh, – they're in a rebuilding process, especially with Josh Rosen at quarterback there. So I don't know at plus 450 that there's really any value whatsoever with Steve Wilkes. John Harbaugh, we've been hearing about him trying to be fired for how long now? Over the last few years, he's at plus 500. Vance Joseph, now you want to talk about value, huh? These two guys, Vance Joseph plus 700, Dirk Cutter plus 700 right now to be shit canned by uh, in the NFL as these are the next guys to go. Now, the key is the next NFL head coach to be fired, not will be fired, because I do think there's a few names on this list that will absolutely get tossed before the end of the year. Uh, the question is, who is the next one to go? Vance Joseph just beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, unfortunately, as much as we'd like to see him go, those of you that followed the Denver Broncos, uh, the reality is Denver is in a position to actually make the playoffs, believe it or not. So I don't know that Vance Joseph is on that hot of a hot seat. Dirk Cutter uh, is another guy that provides some value at plus 700. Dirk Cutter is just maybe one or two more losses away from Tampa Bay going, all right, we're done here. And uh, they got to figure out what they're doing with Jameis Winston. That's an organization. Talk about uh, in total turmoil right now. No idea what they're doing there in Tampa. But Dirk Cutter at plus 700 is not a bad bet. And then you got Doug Marone plus 800. Now, here's the interesting part about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Tom Coughlin just did a radio show up in Jacksonville, came out, and just he his head was going to explode. Now, anybody – who has followed Tom Coughlin, especially during his giant years. Giant fans will tell you. Tom Coughlin and the players, this is a guy who is a stickler. He is a a guy that does not like people to be late for meetings. He is not got he is a disciplinarian like you have never seen before. It's either his way or the highway, which makes what's been going on here with the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, a little hard to understand because they represent absolutely nothing that Tom Coughlin has his entire career, his entire life, and every organization that he has been in has all been about, you know, you let your play do the talking. But unfortunately, they've got a guy like Jalen Ramsey in the secondary who is a quality player, but he does, you know, his his actual trash talking has been better than his play on the field, and that's not going to sit well with a Tom Coughlin. You got Leonard Fournette, who is also now looking at a one-game suspension because he can't control himself. I mean, Jacksonville, they got Blake Bortles, and he shouldn't be starting in any more NFL games. Enough is enough there, and we know that they've already made the switch there. 
But the Jags and Tom Coughlin went on radio and said that it is embarrassing what they've been doing here. It's an absolute embarrassment, uh, their play and their attitude and their uh, professionalism on the field. He used the word total, utter embarrassment uh, is what Tom Coughlin said. And he also said it's being addressed and it will be addressed even, uh, even after the season is over. So I, there is going to be some house cleaning going on in Jacksonville. Now, they have gone ahead and given Doug Marone kind of the pseudo thumbs up that, you know, Doug Marone, he's going to be back. They did fire Nate Hackett, the offensive coordinator. They kind of put the blame on him, I guess. But I'm not sure that J.C. himself could have done anything with Blake Bortles. But they, they've they kind of already gotten their pound of flesh by firing Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator there. But, I mean, the the end of that game, the Bills game, the Bills and the Jaguars, the end of that game it represents everything that Tom Coughlin is is not. I mean, it was an embarrassing loss on the road to the Buffalo Bills. And hats off to the Buffalo Bills, but my word. You know, you had a, uh, a what appeared to be a go-ahead touchdown late in the third quarter that was pulled back. You had a fight that ensued as two players tangled for the uh, – got all caught up there on that potential TD pass. Leonard Fournette became – uh, you know, a guy that is the latest stupid, idiotic Jacksonville Jaguar to do something to cost his team and make it all about him trading punches, uh, especially on a day where he was dominating the offense. He was the only offense the Jags had, and he went and got himself thrown out of the game. So um, I can tell you right now that the Jacksonville Jaguars – are going to be doing some house cleaning. If that includes Doug Marone, that remains to be seen. But there's going to be a lot of people that are on that roster this year that are not going to be on that roster next year. But the two dudes at the top, Mike McCarthy and Todd Bowles, these are guys that have to go. And sooner rather than later. I still am amazed that Mike McCarthy has a job there in uh, in Green Bay. And I do think that once... Green Bay loses one more game and is close to officially eliminated from the playoffs. Mike McCarthy has got to go. He's uh, you can't see you can't watch it anymore. You want to talk about a gutless coach who coaches not to he coaches games not to lose them. He never coaches to win them. His offensive play calling has been nothing short of abysmal. He has been he has wasted just countless years of Aaron Rodgers' time and his ability to be uh, – just think about this whole organization from the standpoint of the last 20 years you've dealt with Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre as your quarterback, and you've only got two Super Bowl trophies to show for it. It's just been terrible, absolutely terrible. So as far as I'm concerned, Mike McCarthy plus 400 – I'm, I'm putting the money down there. Also, Todd Bowles as a Jet coach. The only thing that I'm questioning, Todd Bowles is gone. The only problem with Todd Bowles and, uh, and putting money on Todd Bowles is that they don't really have anybody on that staff that is going to be competent enough to be able to step in, even for the meantime, uh, and finish the season out. So I don't think it makes any sense for the Jets to fire Todd Bowles at this point. They are nothing but a dumpster fire regardless uh, so I don't see anything happening right away with Todd Bowles. The big question is, is the Johnson family going to clean house with Todd Bowles and Mike McCagnan? And a lot of people, and uh, Josina Anderson did a really good spot on ESPN about this, talking about how the draft picks under Mike McCagnan was supposed to be this great uh, football mind, and the man is whiffed more often than he is, uh, than he is hit. And there is some rumors there that they'll both go. But don't forget, Todd Bowles wasn't Mike McCagnin's choice. Todd Bowles was an arranged marriage when McCagnin got there. And we all know those never work out. So I think Todd Bowles will make it through the end of the year. I don't think he'll be the first one fired, but he will be fired. Uh, I don't think Steve Wilkes, I think he'll get more than a year. But I do think that Mike McCarthy and Dirk Cutter are probably where the um, where the money lies. Sean McDermott at plus twenty five hundred, even being on the list is asinine. It's completely asinine. Uh, Sean McDermott, the Bills, 
have a shot at being at making the playoffs. Can you believe that? I'm not like they actually have. They are mathematically have a chance at making the playoffs. So to have Sean McDermott even at plus twenty five hundred is completely asinine at this particular point. But if I was going to bet, and I will, uh, my money is Mike McCarthy. One more Green Bay loss, and Mike McCarthy probably got to go. And I do think that Dirk Cutter also is another guy that will. Um, that has a good shot at being toasted. I'm not sure it's going to – it can't get any much worse than for Doug Marone. So uh, I do think that Mike McCarthy and Dirk Cutter have the best chance of getting fired prior to the end of the season on that list. But who do you think? We want to hear from you guys. Hit us up on the HalftimeMagic.com text line, 305-791-3839. That's 305-791-3839. Tell us, who who on this list do you think is the guy that's going to go next? Who do you think the best bet is on this list? Is it McCarthy? Is it Bowles? Is it Wilkes, Harbaugh, Vance Joseph, Dirk Cutter? Who is it that you think? Hit us up, 305-791-3839. Give yourself an opportunity by participating and contributing to the show you have an opportunity to get a free day's uh, access, a free day pass to HalftimeMagic.com. You get a free day's worth of plays from Scott and the fellows over at HalftimeMagic.com. So tell us who you think. 305-791-3839. It'll be very interesting to see how that goes. All right, we do have – let's get the NBA, the free play of the day, shall we? Because these guys have been straight fire, so let's do that right now. Why we've got your attention, and if you are just joining us, welcome in. It's our another edition of the Joe Ranieri Show, brought to you by uwager.eu, wagertalk.com, trendybets.com, halftimemagic.com, and our good friends over at Miami Acura, who invite you – to take a test drive for that all-new 2019 RDX. If you are in the market this holiday season for a new or certified pre-owned car, Miami Acura is definitely the place that you guys want to head to. We did start off the show. Ralph Michaels joined us talking college basketball. He had a couple of interesting takes on not one but two games tonight that if you didn't get a chance to see the interview, make sure as soon as we're done here, you guys will have access to it. Make sure that you watch that interview. Great information regarding uh, betting on college basketball, especially this time of year. And there are two games that he uh, pointed out tonight that, man, he made a whole lot of sense. So if you're planning on laying a little action tonight, college basketball, definitely make sure you check out what Ralph Michaels had to say there in that interview. All right, Trendy Bets. What else is there to say about these guys? Their trendy bets play of the day has been straight fire over the last couple of weeks. Eight out of the last 11, I think. Uh, They've got actually a few free plays of the day that they put up at the website. So do yourself a favor. Trendybets.com. Head over to the website. Check them out. Affordable packages. And these guys just straight fire. I mean, there's nothing else to say. Eight out of the last 11. They have nailed on their free NBA play of the day. So let's take a look at what they got here today. And we do want to send a shout out, by the way, to uh, Carl joining us in the uh, chat rooms here today. Carl, Frank, Michael, um, Stephen, um, Stefan, all you guys that are hanging out across all five platforms. That would be Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Periscope. You guys rock. Thank you so very much for making us a part of the day once again. Also, Vari, always a pleasure to see you, man. Thanks for coming in. But our trendybets.com play of the day today is Lakers at the Nuggets. Denver laying four right now. Total is 216. Here's what the folks at trendybets.com have to say about this game. First, the over. 4-1 4-1 and one in Lakers' last five road games against the team with a home winning percentage of greater than 600, which the Nuggets have. Uh, also, over 10-4-1, Lakers' last 15 road games versus a team with a winning home record. You also have the over 10-2 and two in the last 12 meetings in Denver between these two teams. And finally, the over 19-5-2 in the last 26 meetings between the Nuggets and and the Lakers. So 10 and 2 the over in the last 12 when the game is in Denver between these two teams and it really doesn't make a difference. The last 26, 19 5 and 2 the over between these two teams. So who do you think Trendy Bets is going with? 
their play over 216. That is your TrendyBets.com free play of the day. Make sure that you guys head over to TrendyBets.com. Check out their other free plays of the game, not only in the NBA, but college basketball, the college football, the NFL. It's all there, all at reasonable prices. Make sure you guys check them out. The over 216 tonight at the Lakers and Nuggets. And that's your TrendyBets.com play of the day. Just a quick reminder, too, this week, we are loaded once again. The captain will join us uh, uh, tomorrow. Always a pleasure when he joins us. Nobody knows Mac action better than the captain. And we've got a whole lot of Mac action title games going on Friday in football. He's got a whole lot of plays happening right now in college basketball. He'll join us tomorrow, as will the Prez, the other half of the founding member of wagertalk.com. He's going to stop by. We're going to talk a little bit about betting strategy and we're going to talk NHL because nobody knows the NHL like the Prez. Leave it to a guy who is currently in Toronto to talk about hockey. Huh? What a shock. Uh, but the Prez will be here tomorrow. Ralph Michaels back on Thursday to talk college football and the NFL. And then our newest member here on the show, Joe D'Amico, All-American wins. We love this guy. You're going to love Joe, too. What a character. Uh, And this is a guy that's been doing this 40-some-odd years, and his clients just keep coming back for more and more and more. And he's going to be joining us now on Fridays. Joe D'Amico, you do not want to miss that interview, guys. The guy is a character, and he is an awful lot of fun. And we're glad that he's going to be joining us here on Friday. So that is your list of cappers thus far. Also, I believe Sports Picks 365, right? We're going to talk to those guys, talk a little college basketball. We're going to do that tomorrow, probably tomorrow too. So we keep bringing them your way, and we bring them your way, guys, because the people that we bring on the show – are guys that can be certified. They're the real deal, all certified crazy, but they're certifiable from the standpoint that these are not the scamdy cappers that are riddled, unfortunately, all over social media right now. The guys that we bring on on the show are reputable. They are vetted by us. These are guys that we spend our own money with, that we would trust our own investments with, and we, I can promise you, Nobody here would ever bring on anybody on this show if we didn't 100% back them and trust exactly what it is they're doing from a business standpoint. If we invest our money with them, they'll be on the show because we'd never ask you to do that if we didn't believe in these guys. So guys like TrendyBets.com, Halftime Magic, all of the cappers at wagertalk.com. Um, the captain, uh, money pick Matt yesterday, who nailed uh, three of his uh, NHL plays here on the show. We bring these guys on the show so they can talk and tell you a little bit about themselves, but they can also talk intelligently from a game analysis standpoint. And then, of course, they give you some picks. And the guys that uh, have been on the show here over the last couple of weeks have been on fire so do with the information what you will do but i can promise you when you do tune into this show and subscribe and like and come back to us you guys uh understand that the guys that we're bringing on this show are the real deal they're not going to be right 100 percent of the time okay nobody is all right nobody's promising you 100 percent uh, winners but what we're promising you is intelligent quality business professional sports handicappers that aren't going to be right all the time but you know what even when they're wrong they're not going to bitch and moan and cry about it and make excuses about it they're going to go ahead and dissect what might have gone wrong and be better the next time around and that's why we support them and that's why we ask you guys to support them because they are the real deal just like our friends at trendybets.com so get it guys get it get it going and let us take Take a short break so we can thank just a few more of our sponsors here on the show. So, listen, they support us. We hope you'll support them. Resort Release, Laser Spine Institute, and Dish TV. If you are in the need of any of those services, go ahead and please 
make them write those numbers down and give these folks a call. Laser Spine Institute, if you're stuck in a timeshare and you just can't get out, you can't sell it, you don't want anything to do with it anymore, these guys also are amazing. Resort release, 800-898-0816. And coming up, we're going to talk a little college uh, a little college football playoff because the possibilities and the nightmare exists that we could be looking at maybe a two- or a three-loss team in the college football playoff. Can you imagine that? We'll talk about it. That is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Be back in 90 seconds. Where do you want to go on a vacation or honeymoon? The Caribbean, Europe, Hawaii, Mexico? How about Disney or a cruise? At Superior Cruise and Travel, we've got you covered. We'll assign you your own travel concierge. They'll help you design a custom vacation plan that you can't find online. And the service is completely free. You can't compare the value of this to any other online travel company. We can help you plan a custom vacation anywhere in the world. We even offer payment plans with no credit card required. Now you pay off your vacation on your time schedule. Call now and mention the promo code RADIO and save up to $500. Book your custom trip. Call Superior Cruise and Travel now and talk to one of the highest rated travel agencies in the country with a 5-star A-plus online rating. 800-901-5536 800-901-5536 That's 800-901-5536 were you scammed into signing a timeshare contract? And did you miss the part that said you have to pay for your great idea? Not only for the rest of your life, but when you're not here anymore, you get to pass this turkey onto your family for them to pay for the rest of their lives. Thanks, Dad. Don't burden your family down the road and don't be stuck with expensive timeshare payments forever. Get out of your bad idea, timeshare contract guaranteed or pay nothing. Call Resort Release today and learn for free how their timeshare Share Exit team can help you legally exit your timeshare contract. They've helped thousands of people and they're A plus rated with a BBB. So if you feel scammed, get mad and get out of your expensive timeshare contract right now, guaranteed. Call NOW. 800 898 0816. 800 898 0816. 800 898 0816. That's 800 898 0816. Back pain doesn't take vacations. It never celebrates holidays. It's on the job 24 7 to keep your life exactly where it is in limbo. But it doesn't have to be that way because Laser Spine Institute can help you take back your life from chronic neck and back pain. With a less than one inch incision, our minimally invasive procedures have provided relief to over 60,000 patients with a 97% patient satisfaction rate. So get ready to stand tall and live the life you've imagined for yourself without pain. Are you or a loved one suffering from a bulging disc, herniated disc, spinal stenosis, pinched nerve, or degenerative disc disease? Call our spine care consultants now for a no-cost MRI review and to learn more. It's time to say goodbye to chronic neck and back pain. What have you got to lose? Laser Spine Institute, the leader in minimally invasive spine surgery. Call 855 720 Back 855 720 back 855 720 back. That's 855 720 B A C K. Don't be such a pussy. Subscribe to the Say It With Me podcast with Joe Ranieri on iTunes today. Welcome back in uh, tomorrow on the show. It's uh, we are loaded uh, once again, not only with some of the best cappers from around the country, but uh, we also uh, invite some of the best reporters uh, around the uh, country because uh, let's face it, it's these guys that uh, that follow uh, your favorite teams and follow these teams. They give us some insight that, you know, not everybody else has. So we go ahead and tomorrow, for instance, we're bringing on Bill Connolly from SB Nation and nobody does college football like Bill Connolly. This is a guy and his uh, his S and P, his numbers, his analytics are what everybody uses, and it's always fun when we have an opportunity to have him on the show. And uh, he'll be joining us tomorrow. And that's Bill uh, Bill Connolly. Check him out. SB Nation, SBN underscore Bill. Uh, we'll be on the show talking a little Mac Brown hire, all a hundred year old hire going on there. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, I believe. Klingberry, Dingleberry, what's his name? Cl- Dingleberry, Klingsbury. 
whatever. He's not a Texas Tech anymore, but uh, there are a whole lot of uh, reports that um, good old Cliffy, and keep in mind, this was the guy that wanted nothing to do with Baker Mayfield when he was at Texas Tech because Mayfield had a bit of a knee issue, and then, uh, you know, Cliff pretty much ghosted Baker Mayfield, and that's why Baker took a year off and then ended up going to Oklahoma. Uh, but after seven years, he's uh, he got shit canned over at Texas Tech. Now he's unemployed, and every, all the reports are coming over that he will be unemployed for all of 30 seconds because he is a guy that is definitely going to be in the NFL next year. They think his philosophy, his offensive prowess, uh, they uh, he is exactly the kind of guy that the NFL wants next year. So look for him to be, if not a head coach, certainly they're saying an offensive coordinator uh, in one of those positions that opened. Uh, Klingsbury will definitely be a guy that is in the NFL, not back in the um, not back in the college ranks, but definitely in the NFL. Uh, wouldn't it be funny if he was uh, with the Browns? <laughs> yeah, that ain't going to happen. And it's not going to happen, too, because uh, let me just tell you, Greg Williams is going to end up getting this job in Cleveland. Can you believe that, guys? Can we all be realistic here? Yes. As much as we all said, as, as the dumpster fire that Hugh, that Hugh Jackson was, um, Baker Mayfield, first of all, we know doesn't like Hugh Jackson, doesn't appreciate Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson was also a guy that didn't want to start Baker Mayfield this year. Remember, wanted him to back up Tyrod Taylor for a while and, and kind of pay his dues there. Yeah, well, there are reports coming out of the Cleveland Browns uh, organization right now where some of the players are really, not some, most of the players are big time behind Greg Williams. In fact, some are going on record saying that the thing that Greg Williams brings that Hugh didn't is discipline and much needed discipline on this team. That are That is the uh, Mary Kay Cabot out of uh, Cleveland.com. Mary Kay has been covering the Browns for, you know, bless her. I don't know how she's done it for as long as she has done it. We've got her coming on the show on Friday, uh, and she'll speak to this more. But they are, I guess they were a team, it was kind of all over the place, and you guys saw this from Hard Knocks, anybody that watched that show you would understand that maybe discipline wasn't the biggest thing on Hugh Jackson's uh, agenda there. But Greg Williams stepping in as the interim head coach now, and the Browns are 2-1 and one with him. Um, and Baker Mayfield's been playing out of his mind, as that defense certainly has been as well. The last two weeks, both wins, the Browns scored 28 and 35 points. And by the way, the defense has only allowed 36 points combined in those two games. Um, they are going at it. I mean, they are going at it. It appears that the defensive-minded Greg Williams is letting Baker Mayfield fly the plane here, according to reports, that he's letting Baker be Baker and letting him do what he feels most comfortable in, uh, in doing. And Greg just worries about the defense and putting that together. And it's been working out pretty well. And the Browns players have even said that Greg Williams' style of coaching including lineman, offensive lineman J.C. Treader has said that his approach to leading the Browns team has led to an overall discipline inside that locker room, inside that organization, and on the field. He, um, it's also put them in the spot for a, a potential playoff bid. I can't even believe I'm saying that, too. But uh, Treader had said that it's something that the organization and the team desperately needed, that being some discipline here. Quote, I think he's really reined everybody in and got everyone focused on one single goal. I think his leadership has been very strong. He fires up the team. He's got that personality. And the rules and what's expected of each person on the team when it comes to penalties and missed assignments and all of those little things, they're spelled out for you. There is no conclusion. There's no confusion about what is going on. Um, they are basically – Treader is basically telling you right now that the team itself – Loves Greg Williams. That locker room loves Greg Williams. And this is an offensive lineman saying this. This is an offensive line um, lineman saying that Greg Williams is paying attention to the little things. The offense is better. They're not playing nearly as uh, nearly as tight. So, And the defense has been – we knew they had some defensive weapons, but we didn't realize that they – we knew they could be good, but – 
putting it all together. You know what I mean? Having the offense and the defense on the same page at the same time and some attention to detail. Guess what? We've got it. We've got the attention to detail. It's happening right now with the Cleveland Browns. And in fact, they are, and I can't believe that, they are actually still mathematically in it for a playoff spot. I can't even, uh, actually, I can't even believe I am saying that, but that's exactly what's going on. I do also want to let you know some breaking news coming in. Ruben Foster, uh, the former San Francisco 49ers linebacker that was arrested once again for, uh, it looks like, um, uh, was arrested once again because he just, he can't stop putting his hands on women for some reason. Uh, Sounds like a real upstanding dude. Uh, well, the 49ers released him. He was just claimed off of uh, off the waiver wire. It looks like he is now a Washington Redskin. That's right. So the Redskins have a new linebacker. That is Reuben Foster. That, that's according to Adam Schefter. That just came in there. Yes, congratulations, uh, Washington. Quality individual in Reuben Foster there. That looks like what's going to happen. The Redskins will assume the rest of of his rookie contract through 2020, of which there is close to $2 million in guarantees. But unfortunately, though, that $2 million in guaranteed money, unfortunately for Reuben Foster, that was voided when he was suspended. So in terms of money, there's not a whole lot of risk here for Washington if they can get him to clean up his act. Don't know exactly what's going to happen with the latest arrest or what the NFL is going to do. But there is a lot of baggage that comes along with Reuben Foster, but one of those things isn't a ridiculous amount of money that you are going to be on the hook for giving this guy another chance. So the NFL goes to show you once again that if you can play, if you've got some talent, they are willing to put up with an awful lot of your crap until, of course, they can't anymore and people on Twitter uh, decide that they want nothing to do with you, that's when they seem to act the most. But Reuben Foster is now a member of the Washington Redskins, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, welcome in Lexa, who is uh, joining us over there on Periscope, as is Francis. Uh, it's good to see you guys. Welcome in if you're just joining us. It's another edition of the Joe Ranieri Show. The Miami Acura Hotline up top, 855-983-2255. That is how you reach us here on the show. That's 855-983-2255. I did want to talk real quick about what's happening with the college football playoff and what an absolute nightmare this might actually turn out to be. And (laughs) right now, here's what we've got. We know Notre Dame. We know uh, Alabama. We know Clemson and Georgia. Those are your four, right? We also know that Georgia and Alabama are playing this weekend – in the in the SEC conference championship game. So we're trying to go over here. We've been trying to go over today the different scenarios that could lead. Suppose Georgia beats Alabama, right? Let's suppose that Georgia shocks Alabama and they end up uh, winning that game. So does Alabama now fall out of the top four? Is Alabama still not considered one of the best teams in the country? Uh, what do you do with Oklahoma? Oklahoma has got one of the worst defenses in the country. Not one, practically the worst defense in the country. Ohio State, okay, had a 29-point loss to 6-6 six and six Purdue. Okay, they sit in the top six too as well. So if you had to choose between Ohio State and Oklahoma, and let's just assume everything, you know, all is safe in the world, Alabama wins, Clemson is right there, Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, Georgia loses to uh, Alabama. So now you've got to decide between Ohio State and their 29-point loss to a 6-6 six and six Purdue team or Oklahoma, who is, it is one of the worst defensive teams in the country. However, they are one of the, uh, if not the best, offensive team in the country. So who do you choose between those two? assuming that Georgia ends up losing, right? Urban Meyer, the Buckeyes, uh, they just destroyed Michigan. What they did to Michigan was illegal in a lot of states. I mean, it wasn't even funny. 62 to 39. Oklahoma has allowed 40 or more points in its past four games, and they've won them all, but they've still given up 40 or more points. 
thanks to what I believe is the number one rated offense in the country. And by the way, this sucks that Mackenzie Milton, the UCF quarterback, had been injured and he suffered uh, suffered that horrible leg injury. I know his parents came out today and said that uh, he's in good spirits and, you know, he's they said all the right things. But what a blow to UCF. They've got a freshman QB now who's going to be thrust into this. Situ- it's a no-win situation for UCF. It certainly would have been interesting to see what would have happened if, uh, if the injury didn't happen with UCF, given these scenarios. But you still have to deal with an Oklahoma team that ranks 111th nationally in, totally de- in total defense. Okay? To put that in perspective, the other playoff contenders right now, Alabama ranks 6th in total defense. Clemson, 7th, Georgia, 12th, Notre Dame, 22nd, and Ohio State, 67th, okay? So the Buckeyes have the 67th best defense in the country, but they're 44 spots better than Oklahoma. That is how bad the Oklahoma Sooners defense truly is. But offensively, like we said, the Sooners, number one in the nation. Oklahoma, uh, let's see, Ohio State, second offensively in the country. Clemson, third. Alabama, fourth. Georgia, 13th. Notre Dame, 27th. So Oklahoma, clearly their defense is the weakest link. Yet, a lot of people think Oklahoma is a better playoff choice than Ohio State because of that 29-point loss to a 6-6 and Purdue team. So the question is, what do we do here if all goes if all goes loose? Who do you think is the better team between Oklahoma and Ohio State? And suppose Georgia wins, okay? What what happens now? Who are the four most deserving teams in this country? All right? And that is going to be also we're going to put that up on our uh let's get that up on our halftime magic text line as well, by the way. If you're just joining us, that is our text line here on the show, 305-791-3839. That's 305-791-3839, giving you guys an opportunity to contribute here to the show. And for that contribution, yes, for that contribution, our friends at HalftimeMagic.com are willing to select one of you who texts in an opportunity at a free day pass. That's right, a one-day pass uh, one day free picks from halftimemagic.com so you can get your feet wet with them as well. All you have to do is text into the show 305 791 3839. I want to know what are your four teams? Okay. Wh- who do you want? Who do you want in the playoffs? Supposing everything goes. Everything goes according to plan. Alabama wins. Clemson wins. Notre Dame. We got those three, um, but Georgia loses to Alabama. And then you've got Ohio State, and then you've got Oklahoma. Which of those three, Georgia, Oklahoma, Ohio State, which of those three do you think is the best? Not most deserving, the best. I want to hear who you guys think the fourth team should be, the most deserving. I don't care. They got one loss to – I want to know who you think is the most deserving, uh, not the most deserving, the best, absolutely the best. I want the four best teams in the country, okay, Clemson, Notre Dame, Alabama. Who is the fourth best team in this country? Hit us up, 305-791-3839. Because to this particular point, if we look at the playoff history, what are we, four years in now? I think, right, four years in? This is year number four into the college football playoffs, right, guys? Let's look at it this way. No team has ever made the top four with anything even close to a 29-point loss to a 6-6 six and six team. Now, if you compare what Ohio State did to Oklahoma's three-point loss on a neutral field, by the way, against Texas, who is also ranked number 10 and who they've got to play again, I believe, right? Aren't they playing the Red River Shootout? is happening again this week. So keep in mind, too, that Ohio State, they have a one-point win over a 5-7 and seven Maryland team. They got a five-point win over a 4-8 and eight Nebraska team. They Yes, they demolished Michigan. We know this. But they had a one-point comeback win at Penn State, and that pretty much – sums up what Ohio State has been this year, including a, including a 29-point loss to a 6-6 six and six Purdue team. 
if Oklahoma beats Texas in this rematch on Saturday, they will have beaten everybody in the Big 12, and they'll also have owned quality wins over the Longhorns, West Virginia, the Mountaineers, plus a whole nother group of second-tier quality wins, uh, uh, Iowa State and Army. And in terms of competition compared to Ohio State, they won't have a blowout loss to a team that probably isn't even bowl eligible or won't be bowl eligible unless, of course, they actually win something here tonight, uh, this Saturday. So uh, if you really want to get crazy, too, there's the, if Georgia loses a close, well-played SEC matchup against Alabama, could you even consider a two-loss Bulldogs team? ahead of either Oklahoma or Ohio State. That's what we want to hear from you guys. That's what we want to hear. Hit us up on the text line right now to HalftimeMagic.com. Text line number is 305-791-3839. That's 305-791-3839. What do you do? What do you do with a if it's a close loss with Georgia? Do you put in a two-loss Georgia team? Are they? Is Georgia still better than an Ohio State option or a Oklahoma option? Suppose Oklahoma loses. Suppose Georgia loses. Uh, does Ohio State automatically back themselves into a game? Or, well, I mean, suppose, yeah, suppose they all lose. Then what are you going to do? I mean, that's really the crazy part about it, right? What happens if they all lose? Suppose Alabama beats Georgia by 50. Suppose Northwestern upsets Ohio State in the Big Ten game. Texas beats Oklahoma. And somehow or another, Memphis ends up beating UCF. Who backdoors the fourth playoff spot? I mean, it could get absolutely ballistic here uh, in the college football scenario. It could be, I mean, if everything is right with the world, then you really only have one decision to make, Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, and then you guys have to decide whether or not a two-loss Georgia team is still a better option than a one-loss Oklahoma team, supposing they win or a, uh, you know, a one-loss Ohio State team, supposing they win. But what happens if Northwestern wins, if, uh, if Texas ends up taking down Oklahoma and Georgia ends up, uh, or Alabama beats Georgia by, you know, 40, 50 points? Who's next? UCF? I mean, is that, is that where we look at UCF having an opportunity to come in and play? And what are you going to do? With a backup, uh, you know, with a freshman quarterback? Because Milton's gone with that horrific leg injury? What in the hell do you do? So that's what we want to know from you here. Hit us up here, guys. 305-791-3839. Give yourself a chance at a free pass, a one-day free pass, halftimemagic.com. All right? That's right. Halftimemagic.com. That is the text line. And uh, they're going to give uh, one of you, one of you lucky contributors here to the show, is going to get a free pass, a free day's worth of plays, courtesy of HalftimeMagic.com. But I want to know who you think. Who do you think is the best out of all of them, the best number four team in there? Who you got? 305-791-3839. That's 305-791-3839. Is it Ohio State if they went out? Is it... Uh, is it Oklahoma if they went out? Or is it a Georgia team if they come really close to be? Or even if Georgia beats Alabama, is there any way you keep Georgia out? And then you got to deal with Alabama. So give me uh, give me your scenario and tell me who you'd like to see in that number four spot there. 305-791-3839. And for those of you that might just be joining us here, want to thank our friends at TrendyBets.com. Their NBA play of the day, if you guys missed it a little bit earlier. There it is. Lakers at Nuggets. They are taking the over tonight, 216. Over 216 in the game tonight. Lakers at Nuggets. It's those two bottom uh, those two bottom stats that really blew me away. 10-2 and two in the last 12 uh, that they've played in Denver, these two teams have gone to the over. And then the last 26, 19-5-2 in the last 26 between these two teams. Damn, they're going 216 over tonight as their NBA free play of the day, courtesy of TrendyBets.com. Do yourself a favor, head over to TrendyBets.com. They've got not only NBA free plays, but they've got college basketball free plays and all sorts of goodies and information there. And if you are looking 
for a new perspective, a new point of view, might I suggest giving TrendyBets.com a chance. These guys have been nothing short of fantastic uh, with us, and their plays have been great. So give them a shot, TrendyBets.com. Once again, our schedule this week, want to thank Ralph Michaels for coming by today. Ralph at wagertalk.com. He had a couple of plays on uh, college basketball tonight. As soon as we are done here, make sure you guys rewind it. Check out the interview with Ralph Michaels. He had some just great information about handicapping college basketball this time of year. Some great nuggets of information you don't want to miss from Ralph. Uh, and we want to thank him for stopping by. He'll be joining us, as you see on this list, Thursday, Ralph Michaels, NFL and college football discussion each and every Thursday. He'll be back. But tomorrow we are blessed with uh, with two of some of the two of the best, really. The captain will be talking about his Mac action, college basketball, college football this Friday in the Mac and the Prez. He's going to do a little edumacation tomorrow for us from wagertalk.com. The Prez is uh, one of the creators and founders of Wager Talk, and uh, he's also one of the smartest handicappers you guys will ever meet. He's going to join us tomorrow. We're going to talk a little bit about understanding how to bet as a sports better, and he's also got some plays in the NHL that he wants to give you an opportunity to cash in on. And then Friday, Big Joe Joe, Joe D'Amico, All-American wins, is going to be joining us. Joe, been doing it 35, 40 years. What a character when I tell you, and this guy is the real deal when I tell you, you haven't been around 40-some-odd years doing it in Vegas uh, if you don't know what the hell you're doing. And wait until you meet Joe D'Amico. He's going to be joining us on Fridays from here on out. You guys are going to love him. One of the most fun interviews, one of the most fun guys that you will ever meet, and also probably one of the most knowledgeable uh, when it comes to sports betting, uh, one of just totally one of the best at all American wins there. You guys are going to love him. That's on Friday because the best handicappers, guys, we try. We bring them here for you. So you have it and you have an opportunity to actually cash out and make some money. And that is what it is all about. So those of you, uh, congratulations if you participated here in the show. Don't forget the halftime magic.com text line. Do yourself a favor. Write this number down, 305-791-3839. Every time you contribute to the show, you give yourself an opportunity to get a free pass to halftimemagic.com. That's right, halftimemagic.com will give you a free day's worth of play simply for hanging out with us here on the show and contributing in. 305 791 3839. Write that number down and keep it there. Uh, all right. On behalf of uh, Miami Acura, TrendyBets.com, of course, HalftimeMagic.com, our good friends at Wager Talk, and UWager.eu. That wraps it up here. Another edition of the Joe Ranieri Show. If you missed Ralph's uh, interview, don't forget, as soon as we're done here, make sure that you guys check it out. He's got two hot plays tonight in college basketball that you don't want to miss. And do us a favor, if you get a chance, please go ahead, subscribe, like, retweet, do all of that good stuff. We would certainly appreciate it all the time and effort that goes into here. We do it so you guys don't have to wonder and figure out, are these guys the real deal? Does this guy know what he's talking about? The cappers on this show are the real deal. They're professional, they're transparent, and they're here to help us all be a little bit better when it comes to sports betting. So have a blessed night, guys. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Come back, join us 4 o'clock tomorrow, the Joe Ranieri Show. Have a great night. Good luck tonight. <laughs>